welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you have landed on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to take pre-loved items and share the process with you all of what I would do with these items. So we are in the Easter season and I have gathered, I'm a gatherer, I found enough goodies to share with you what I would do with all these vintage and antique finds and create some beautiful decor for the Easter season. What is it about boxes? That old bettina wood, that little, and this one, three little cubbies. So oh, it's just so super cute. So I just happened to stumble across three little bunny ornaments in a bag at an antique mall for like minimal. And I thought, oh my gosh, these are perfect, perfect for this little box, this little three cubby box, which was probably a drawer, but we're going to make it into a shelf. I'm definitely not going to try to hang these by any means, so I'm going to go ahead and take that little piece of raffia off and see if I can get the little ornament hanger off them also. But I'd like to make them pop a little bit more, so I'm going to add some decoupage paper to the back of this. So I think this is just the perfect, it's not going to take away from those cute little bunnies, it's just going to add a little bit of a background to it. And I think I'm going to take like this quarter of the page where there's just random wording and lettering, nothing too overpowering to take away from the cute little bunnies. I'm going to measure off what I need to cut and as I'm measuring the little cubby box it's not they're not all the same size so I'm just going to get it close enough so it's kind of like a two and a half by two and a half but some of them are slightly bigger than two and a half so I'm just going to cut them down to two and a half and what fits is what fits sometimes we can put way too much stress on a project when it's just supposed to be something simple that I have them all cut out I'm just going to use some of the fusions decoupage transfer gel to apply these on to glue up to the back and then to seal in the front so nice thing about it it is matte so it when it dries it'll dry clear and you won't see any shiny if I accidentally get anything off onto the side of the box To attach the little bunny ornaments, I'm just going to try to pick out the best side, what I think is the cutest little side of each of one of them, and I'm just going to use some hot glue to stick them in there. There may be a little bit larger, but that's okay. That A little bit of hangover is not going to be any big deal whatsoever. But see how that paper just makes the bunnies pop a little bit more. feel like the box just needed a little bit something like maybe a ribbon but not like your normal ribbon I just happen to have a rusty crusty metal ribbon so I'm gonna go ahead and figure out how the heck I'm gonna attach it first and then <laughs> yeah um yeah I think I think it's light enough that hot glue will just hold it in place I just need to get it bent so that that is flat and that I can flare out the ribbons So if you know the original use of this tin metal box, please let me know. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It has like the right amount of age, the right amount of patina, and the lid on it is really heavy. So, <laughs> so the way that I have kind of taught myself to keep a lid up in the upright position to make it a cute little vignette 
is just to run beads of hot glue along the back and along the front. Let that cure, let that dry and stiffen up and it'll hold that box, that lid, in the upright position. But this box matched this little pink bunny that I got at an estate sale. And if you watch the Ginger Chick Rehab the Journey channel, you haven't yet seen this. This will be in Sunday's haul, but I was so super excited to get to use it that it matched that tin that I had. And the Dollar Tree, oh my gosh, pink bottle brush trees and that they are little. Did you see how that glitter in the bottom? But oh, this is just going to be a pink explosion going on in this little box. But I would like to rise the items that I'm putting in the box up just a little bit like the trees. Not so much, I don't need super high for the bunny, but I do would like him to be a little bit on the higher side. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut some of the Dollar Tree floral foam and glue it into the bottom. Um, since my, my bunny is a little bit on the heavier side, sometimes I can cut it, that floral foam, nice and even in the first cut. Sometimes I have to saw it and to get it to be level, but, you know, the things, the things that we do as crafters, good thing it's just from the Dollar Tree store. Now, I had to go to multiple different Dollar Trees um, in different towns because my local didn't have those colored bottle, little bottle brush trees. Um, just when I was at estate sales and I was in a different town, I'd stop by their Dollar Tree and see what they had. So not all of them carry the same stuff, that is for sure. So now to cover up that green floral foam, I just have some green paper grass. I got this at a garage sale and it was a huge stuffed bag of it and I absolutely love it. If anybody knows where you can buy it, because sooner or later I will run out of it, but I just absolutely love the color. It's like a muted green color, so it's not overpowering. Did you hear me say that this was going to be a pink explosion? Oh, by all means, is it ever. So I am a gatherer and I am a matchy matchy person. So I started off with the tin and then I found the bunny. And the next thing you know, I found the trees at the Dollar Tree store. And then there was a bag of some plasticky eggs. And I'm like, oh, so there's some pink ones in here. So it all, it all kind of somehow flows together that we as gatherers, once we finally have enough to create with. But wait, there's more. It's like an infomercial. <laughs> so Hobby Lobby had a bag of plastic mushrooms. I already showed you all the how I used the blue ones in a previous video. And they have pink. <laughs> so you know I'm going to be adding them in here. I love that pink. I love the spots on them. That is kind of nice because the spots are just giving it another color. I'm on the fence about the red little mouth that the bunny has. I can't tell if it's original or somebody painted on. It doesn't just scrape off with my finger. So it is there to stay. Hobby Lobby also had a bag of pink. <laughs> pink bunnies because I don't have enough pink going on. It's a little bit different of a pink. It's like the bunny had baby bunnies. So yeah, you know, we're going to go ahead and add those little, little guys in there too. Yeah, I know it's a lot of pink, but now I'm going to add a little lilac -y purple to it. I have this beautiful rosary. I'm not going to glue the rosary in. I'm just going to ever so slightly lay it on the top. But I do think the back needs a little bit of wording. So I bought some labels from a lady at a local antique mall that said bunny, which I thought was perfect. But I think that like distracts from the whole thing. So I am going to use a little bit of the aging wax on it just to give it a 
little bit more age so you're not just like in your face that stark creamish color taken away from all that pink. <laughs> Think that I probably would have used like baskets for these kind of things but I don't know I kind of like the boxes and I love finding little like reasons to use the boxes so these little vignettes are perfect so there again I'll just glue up those hinges on both sides so that it stays up and then I'm going to need something I want to put decor on top of it so the floral foam from the Dollar Tree store is a great great for rising it up but this one's going to have a little bit more of a neutral primitive vibe going on so i have i have a vision so i'm just using some brown crinkle paper because i have this beautiful look at him that little age patina bunny doll is that it's probably like a coffee tea stain dye oh it's so super sweet so to add a filler instead of like rising up i thought these little yarn spools string spools strings would be perfect to add as a filler in there i like that cream with the bunny and it's just filling up space and hobby lobby had velvet carrots i just all i could think of was the velvet rabbit but anyway i'm like oh my gosh velvet carrots i think even though i think the velvet like has enough age that it will match in here perfectly so we're just going to add a whole bunch of these carrots to fill in a lot of the space that's why it was nice to have those little spools of string to act as a good filler to give yourself another element of the cream that went with the bunny and that we could work around it was kind of like my dry fit before I did hot glue them all in and then I have another little sign that I bought off the lady makes these signs she has there's a whole booth in my local one of my antique malls that she has and they're like a couple bucks I mean you really can't beat that so she has this cute little Peter Rabbit it would have been nice to find a velvet rabbit but there wasn't one so yes I'm just going to put I'm not even going to glue that little sign on there because it just fits perfectly just like that now i have some more speckled eggs which is another cream element so i'm going to dry fit those in see where i want them all to be and then i'll get them hot glued on like little cubby boxes like this this looks like it was made to hang so there's an option but I'm going I think it's a little bit too long plus I want to repaint this so I'm going to go ahead and get that wire off there I just love little I think these little boxes are so nice it's just nice to collect your decor in and make little vignettes out of these type of boxes talk about what an amazing green color upper canada is oh my goodness spring is in the air with this color not only is it amazing in the container but look at that once i got it on this oh wow this is going to be one of my favorite spring greens that is for sure
And then cleaning that box, the coverage on this was amazing. Two coats, completely covered. The, the original paint had a little bit of texture on it. Didn't seem to have any problem. Fusion paint is awesome with that primer paint and top coat all in one, so it is ready. And I love the color as is. I'm not sanding anything. I just think it's beautiful. So let's get some spring decor in here. So I have a bird's nest that I picked up thrifting. I love that mossy green on it. Look at those two greens are awesome together. And then I only have one stem of this berry stem left. Um, but I thought that color coordinates with the green that I just painted, which also coordinates with the mossy on that bird's nest. Oh, it's beautiful. You know how it goes. I know that I want to add a yellow chickadee in here, but I think this one, that ceramic, is a little too large. I think the duck may be a little bit too large. So I think I have to go back in my stash and see what else it is that I have. I think I have plenty of space that I can add this battery operated candle. So it's kind of like a tree barkish look. So there's enough coverage from the nest and enough coverage from the, the pit berries. I just thought it would be nice to have that lighted in there. So you really, I mean, you do see the candle, but it's not your main focus by any means. I do this think that this little chickadee is a little bit more size appropriate to that nest, but it's that nice bright pop of yellow that I think this little vignette needs. So I, I would like a little bit more, so sometimes you have to play on like, well, do I like this little, like, mm, no, I, I don't think I like that. Sometimes you just have to decide like, okay, enough is enough, and then you can actually add too much to something. So I think the vignette itself is as good as, it's good just like this, other than I am only going to add back one of the wires because I didn't fill in those holes. There was two wires and then the wire was really, really long, but I'm going to go ahead and um, shorten up the wire and then do my little twist where you twist it in on itself on the inside so it's a little bit neater of a wire. I have a heart for salvage finds, even though they may not make sense to a lot of people. This little corner, I have no idea what it came off, off of, but I personally saw it as a place to collect littles, you know, make a little vignette out of. Though it does need a little bit of help because you can see where it was sawed off of. And then, so what I'm going to do is it's got, actually got multiple layers of paint on it. So I'm going to just try to distress some of the edges, see if I can get some of that natural wood to come through. And then I'm going to go ahead and take whatever white paint I think will match on that clean cutted area and try to cover that up. So talk about having to find some littles for this little bitty shelf, but I managed to do it somehow. This little vintage bunny, oh my gosh, almost has a velvet feel to them. And then I have a vintage block, which then I have the E for Easter. And then I want to add these pit berries because I think the tone, the color of the pit berries, there's something I cut off of a wreath that I thrifted. You know, yeah, never underestimate what you can find at the thrift store. It may be a little bit worse for wear, but sometimes when you cut it apart, you can still use those pit berries. So then I took a little bit of it, a little bitty amber bottle, the littlest one that I had, and I'm just going to fill it up with these little pit berry stems that I cut off a wreath. going to glue hot glue all these two I'm not going to hot glue the pit berries in in the bottle because that's going to be really hard if somebody wants to change it out sometime but 
Yes, I also am going to add one of the Dollar Tree carrot bottle brush trees, but I, I'm going to actually, it was already taken off the little um, wooden disc that it was on, and which is fine because that's how I wanted it to be anyway. But yes, I was lucky enough to run across those at one of my excursions out at a Dollar Tree. So thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think? Yes, just gathering up, looking for little treasures, little bitty small items. Vintage Easter is harder to find than vintage Christmas, that is for sure. But I hope that I have inspired you in any way. Give me a quick comment down below if I have. <laughs> and here's Tater again because he loves to be in the closings every time. So give me a quick comment down below if I have inspired you in any way to look at secondhand finds in a new way, especially for the Easter season. So again, thanks for watching. We will see you next time and you can see what we're up to. Bye. Did you need to see everybody? <laughs> so, he's so stinking cute.